This episode is brought to you by Arden Labs Education. Sign up today to learn advanced concepts in Go, Docker, Kubernetes, Terraform, and more. Visit ardenlabs.com forward slash education for more information. Welcome to the Arden Labs podcast. Our special guest today is Ishua Karaoke. Hey, Ishua, how's it going? It's going well. Thank you for having me, Bill. Um, I'm honored to be here. We're honored to have you. Now, t uh, where are you talking to us from today? From Nairobi, uh, Kenya. Oh, I love that city. Yeah, I love that city. Did we get to meet when I was there? Were you part of that uh, event? Yes, I, I came to your workshop. Uh, I came in a bit late, but I attended your workshop. Yeah. I'm sure I made a little fun of you when you walked in late, because uh, I'm known to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Um, actually, the picture that I have on my Twitter banner is from that day when I was running to the camera. So I'm sure if I look closely, I'm going to see you in that in that picture. That's that's awesome. All right, give everybody a couple of minutes of time to uh, share what you're doing today in Nairobi. Right now, I am a software engineer at uh, Microsoft. Um, I, I've been doing this for 11 years, and I just joined Microsoft um, last year, July. Um, yeah, I, I really love building things, um, understanding new things or new ways of writing code or even new languages. I also enjoy hiking and running uh, and being outside when I'm not on my computer. So what are they, what are you um, specifically doing uh, at Microsoft? Like what, what, what problems are you solving? And then kind of maybe what tech stack you're using for that too? So I'm currently working at, on the Azure, Asia Active Directory and yeah, what I'm trying, what my team is trying to do is improve how users uh, report problems and how the how we offer them solutions before they can, you know, submit issues uh, and talk to a human. So we are we are trying to reduce the time and the number of uh, incidents or cases that are reported by users by actually giving them solutions before they create the the problems and. Uh, tech stack is interesting. It's C sharp and C sharp for the back end and React for the front end with TypeScript. Um, unfortunately, I'm not writing Go at the moment at uh, at Microsoft. Hope soon enough, soon, soon enough, I'll be writing Go. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm currently doing. That's kind of the problem. I, I would have expected you. I would have expected you to say C sharp. I was a C sharp developer before I moved into Go, and I was really productive with that programming language. I I enjoyed C sharp. Um, I, I I like the language, so that's that's fair. It must have been exciting to get a job at Microsoft, right? Yes, it was a bittersweet moment uh, because the team I worked with before joining Microsoft was, I feel like, one of my. Um, I really enjoyed working with that team. Um, I'd been there for two years, and the team grew as I was there. Um, it was a pretty small team, eight people, eight to ten people, ten by the time I left. Saying that I was leaving and that whole whole situation was, I felt it, it was a bit emotional, but, you know, life happens and we move on. Yeah. Uh, people don't, I didn't know this when I went to Nairobi, but there's a lot of big tech that's setting up offices in that city. I remember being near the mall or something where a lot of them were, there was an amazing mall over there. And I think a lot of, a lot of the companies were setting up kind of shop in that area. I could be wrong about that, but uh, it's nice to see. Yeah, there's, there's quite a number of companies. Um, Microsoft expanded, has been expanding since. 2019, uh, Google is now here, is now expanding rapidly, and it's, it's 
kind of created this uh, uh, scenario where you know the big tech companies of course are paying better and now there's this there's the other tech companies the tech companies that are you know Nairobi based or you know, yeah and and now there's this pay pay difference and you know compensation difference that they have to account for it's um I mean, there's a lot of great engineers in the in, in the region, and a lot of great companies that are local to the region, and I'm and I'm sure this is this is just going to get better. So so that's everywhere. The moment Google, Amazon, I don't care who it is, they show up. It's just that's it. There's an exodus, and it just becomes more expensive for companies like myself to yeah. to hire, uh, right? It's just that's yeah. everywhere. So, um, but at the same time, it's it can also help um, uplift a lot of people, and it opens up jobs too, right? So you moved on to Microsoft, that opened up positions for other people now too. So I mean, there's there's good and bad with everything there. Okay, we're gonna get back to how you ended up at Microsoft in a little while, but I wanna kind of hear your journey, your story through tech. What I want to do first is we, I don't know, how does, before I ask you any other questions, because it helps me with kind of dates and time frames and stuff. Can you describe just a little bit what the school system is like up into the time you start university? At like, so in the US, you have what's called grade school, that's like kindergarten through six, and then you have middle school, seven and eight, and then you have high school, right? Nine through 12. And by the time you're in 12th grade, you're six or 17, maybe 18 years old, right? And you start school around five. So can you describe how just school works in, in Nairobi so I can get a sense of kind of time timelines there? Okay. There is a uh, kindergarten um, that's between ages of three, four and five, four to six and then there's uh primary school which goes from one to nine to eight um and then this is what i went through this currently a shift in the system it's completely different now but what i went through was uh kindergarten and then primary school one to eight high school uh which is four years and then uni university which is four to five years Okay, so it's on the same, it was, that timeline is exactly what we see in the U.S., right? So how old were you then when you graduated high school? I was... I'm not, no, that's not, what, what year, what year? I knew you were like 17. Four. What year did you graduate high school? I was a silly question. What year did you graduate high school? 2005. Okay, perfect. Okay, so 2005, you're like 17, 18. You're, okay, so now I want to bring all the way back to that question. Think back on that first memory you have of interacting with a computer. What's that first memory that pops in your head where like you saw a computer, you got to interact with it, you you had this just moment? Um, first time was at my dad's office. Um, I remember distinctly because he took us from the place we grew up. Uh, he used to work in Kisumu. I grew up in Akuru. Which is about a hundred and about one hundred and eighty kilometers away from Nairobi. Drove us all the way to Kisumu, which is quite a distance, and he was showing us his office, his setup, and everything. And I remember walking to his office. He had this huge desk with banknotes from different parts of the world under a pane of glass. It looked amazing. But then, what caught my attention was this white object that sat in the corner with a screen on top and I was just I was I started fiddling with it moving the mouse and it was it was windows windows 3.0 or 3.1 the the one the one that was before 1995 the one with the weird colors and stuff and I was just so fascinated I I I really wanted to spend time there or just interact with it so you were you were in high school then at the time right i mean that means you were in high school right no that was i 
This is oh no, it couldn't have been right. Yeah. Right. This okay. Is, how old were you? Do you remember how old you were? I think I was seven, either seven or eight. Like seven or eight. That's like a two-hour drive, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, from Nakuru to Kisumu, it's like a, yeah, it's like a three-hour drive. And your dad worked three hours away from home, and he had to commute every day. No, not every day. He used to uh, spend the week working and then come home Saturday evening. And then we get to spend Saturday evening, Sunday, and then um, he left Tuesday again. I've heard stories like this before. Did your dad not want to move everybody? I guess he was working in Nairobi then, right? So he didn't want to move everybody in Nairobi at the time or... But do you remember what the decision was there for that type of, I guess? Oh, yeah. So he, he worked in Kisumu, and all, the rest of the family was in Nakuru. And uh, the biggest, my, mom, my mom's a teacher. Uh, she's actually retiring this year. Um, at the time, she used to teach uh, in Nakuru. And I used to school in Nakuru. Like, the whole family was in Nakuru. But... Yeah, we could have just, this is not something I've ever thought about <laughs> until you <laughs> brought it up. I've never thought about this. Uh, we could have moved to Kisumu and and lived in Kisumu. It's by the lakeside, and I'll actually ask this question to my parents. I've never thought about it that way. This was just normal. This was just normal for you, right? Like, it was just normal for for people to take jobs like this to support the family, right? So you never thought about it. But yeah, it would be a super interesting question to ask your, your parents um, what, what it was at the time. They may have just really enjoyed the lifestyle that you had where you were living and they didn't want to interrupt that, right? So he took a burden to do that. But yeah, I would definitely ask that. That's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. That's interesting, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to that. So this was like Windows. It had a mouse. It was before Windows 95. Your dad didn't, like, yell at you to, like, not touch the computer at the time in his office? He just let you let you have at it? He showed me how to, you know, how to use it, how to uh, operate uh, a few things. And then he gave me a book. I'll remember, I'll always remember this. It was uh, an a very well illustrated book and it was about introduction to computers or something of the sort. So you had all these diagrams, okay, this is a floppy disk, this is what floppy disks looked like before. And I was so fascinated because now I could just, I have this wealth of information in my hands and I can just keep referring to this when I'm, you know, learning about computers. And that was, yeah. But how many times did you get to go back to the office? Because this computer was in the office. So was you had that one moment, but did you get to go back and play with it? Just that one moment. That was just that one he moment. He gave me the book. But he gave yeah, you the book? He gave me the book. But he gave you the book to take home? It was pretty cool. When do you see another computer after that, right? So this was like that special field trip. I did that. My dad worked. I'm going to, okay, my dad's passed away, so nobody's going to get in trouble. My dad worked at... Uh, at, at Grumman Aerospace uh, his whole life. And he snuck me into the plant one because you had badges and you had to do, he hid me under, under a cloth, drove through the guard booth, and I got to see his office about the same type age you were. You know, my mom was panicking because if he got caught, he was going to get fired, you know. Um, and I remember that too, right? Th that special moment where dad did something really special with you and you got to see that. Uh, that's fantastic. But let's go back then. So when's the next time you have this book, you're reading this book, you don't have a computer in front of you. Like, what's that next memory that you have now? Like, The next time I saw a computer or interacted with computers was primary school. Uh, when I moved from a public school to a private school. Um, once this private school had a computer lab, I remember, and it had seven computers. One was one one was never functional. One was always broken or something. And so we only had six computers for a class of around 20 students. And there was no 
no internet connection um but they were nice like nice computers and i just remember playing a lot of minesweeper and there's this other game uh, prince of persia i'll never forget that um but yeah that was that was the next time we interacted with computers which was it was interesting i was just all over the place and try and find a way to sneak into the computer room. In primary school, to to to, but you wanted to play games at the end of the day. That you were trying to sneak in. Did you sneak in a few times? Did you get Did you get caught? Did you sneak in and? I snuck in once, but I, uh, we it was a group of us, but we were not smart enough to. We thought if we turn the monitors this other way and switch off the lights, no one would see us. But the bright screen, the screens were just too bright that. You could actually see from outside. You could see this activity happening from in the in that room. So yeah, we we got caught. <laughs> I'm curious. Before we we, what did they do there? They just kicked you out of the room, right? Like you didn't get in any real trouble. There was we got kicked out of the room, but because it was at night and we were breaking, uh, it was a boarding school, and we we snuck out from our dorm, dorms to go to. We got into trouble. <laughs> we got into trouble. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, but like you got detention. Did they? Did they? Uh, they paddled you back then? <laughs> yes, they paddled us. Shrek. <laughs> shot, 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 and then. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> we were on cleaning duty. I think we were on cleaning duty for a week or something. No, for like three days. Three days. You're doing. Uh, cleaning patrol for three days and you got beat but that didn't stop you you tried again because come on now you're uh you're like 14 years old right yeah and then there's prince of Persia waiting for me over there there's other new stuff you're always learning when you're on a computer and yeah i was just curious about it. at that time i wasn't even thinking about programming or anything close to that i was just fascinated by computers do you still have that book that your dad gave you back when you were like seven, eight? I don't have, I'll have to go home. If, when, when I go back to Nakuru, I'll look, go look for it. It's somewhere in, the, um, in my old bookshelf. Yeah, you need to find it. Make sure it's up on your bookshelf now, right? Like that's an important book. All right, so you, when you start high school, is it the same boarding school for high school or you, you jump schools? The private school, private primary school was in Nakuru, and I went to high school um, in Tika, uh, which is basically yeah, it's 40, it's like 40 kilometers away from Nairobi. So this is far from home. It's the farthest from home I've ever stayed for for an extended period of time. But it's like a half an hour away, right? I mean, 40 kilometers is only about a half an hour away. Yeah, from Nairobi, but now I'm I'm in Nakuru. Nakuru is like two two hours from Nairobi, so it's like two and a half hours away from home, which is not too bad. But no, still, I mean, yeah, it's two hours is decent. So why did you choose that high school? I guess you had choices, right? What was it about that high school? Or you didn't have choices. You were told that's where you're going. So yeah, well, actually, when you're doing your final exam, uh, primary school, you get to pick, you get to write down which schools you want to go to. So there was, so I picked the the best schools were Alliance High School, Tarehe Boys Center, and Mangu High School was another one, a big one for boys. So I wrote, I, I wrote Tarehe Boys Center and Mangu High School. You had to pick two uh, national schools. And then two provincial schools, like uh, following the list. So uh, fortunately, I was called to Mangu High School, which is which was great, and because that's where I wanted to go. And <laughs> you had to show up. You had to show up with a hockey stick, um, two buckets, a broom. Like so, the list of items you had to show up with, and you never get to see these items again. This are uh, like your coming to donate to a hockey stick to the hockey team, uh, buckets that you'll probably use. It. It's like a dowry. You had to you had to deliver a dowry that had hockey sticks, baskets, and brooms? Yes. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. 
What happened? Okay, wait, wait, wait. I got a couple of questions here. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to go back to that for a second. Was the school paid for by the state or your parents had to pay for the schooling? Parents had to pay for the school. All right, so this wasn't like free public school. And on top of having to pay for the school, they had to pay for a hockey stick, some baskets, yes. a broom. Yeah. What happens if you don't show up with these things? They say, go home. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Nobody That's knows because they show up. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Everyone showed up with buckets. <laughs> you know what, <laughs> Eric? Eric, we're gonna do this at Arden now. When you when you get a job at Arden, you gotta show up with a hockey stick, <laughs> <laughs> bucket, and a broom. <laughs> a blanket and a broom. Oh my God, that is Eric. Write this down, bro. This is this is way too cool. It's amazing. That is amazing. Okay, so um, so your you, your parents had to pay for the schooling, right? I mean, that's right. I mean, they 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 put some of the house. Do you have how many siblings? Do you have any siblings? Yes, one uh, younger brother. Younger brother. Okay, so I mean, your parents had to. I imagine the school wasn't that inexpensive. I imagine these private schools because they were boarding you. They had to feed you. There was, um, yeah. I mean, that's that's amazing. Yeah, it was. It, it's actually a public school, but you know the the fees are subsidized compared to now going to private schools. But it it was an amazing experience, I'd say. So why this school? What was it about this school that you wanted? Was was it a technical school? Did you have in your? Okay, actually, I got to ask this question. You had to choose these schools. What were you thinking when you chose the schools? Why this school? Were, what were you hoping to accomplish at this school that you couldn't have? done somewhere else or better? Uh, one, uh, it's a prestigious prestigious school. Um, and I'd say that uh, prom a lot of prominent people had gone through the school. And you always hear good things about the people who went to this school. It's really, it's one of those schools that um, has a lot of, a long history and a long good history. So, <laughs> and, and fun fact, this school offered aviation as one of the courses. So, uh, I mean, I was like, it's fine. Maybe I won't be a pilot, but at least I get to hang out in a, you know, a school, probably take a class of aviation or this, just learn something about planes. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was also one of the reasons I, I chose Bangu. Um, and yeah, two of my uncles had been to Mangu before, always sung praises. Um, but then <laughs> they were in Mangu back in the back in the sixties and the fifties. So quite a different experience. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, every right, but still you're you're okay. So now I understand the, the school. This is a four year high school, right, right? So my guess is you're also pl playing sports, you're doing music, or is it pure just academics? Sports, uh, sports was highly encouraged um, at Mamu. Uh, so I was, I was in, the, in the rugby team. Not, well, okay, what number did you wear on your jersey? What, what was your position in the rugby? I was, I, I was a tight head prop. You were a prop? Yeah, I was okay, a prop. Okay, I, I played hooker for like, like a few months until I thought my neck was going to break in half because my props were not good and they didn't go forward. They always went up. They always went up. It was not good. No, yeah. So where's my <laughs> neck going to go? I'm going to snap, Bob. It's like I'm done with this, you know. So you're a prop. I mean, you're that's an important position right there. Yeah, yeah. It was it was fun. Uh, there was a lot of character development. Um, I was not. The biggest guy in the in the squad. I wasn't the the fastest, but at least I was. I could hold my own on the on the pitch. I could. I was. I wasn't a star player by any chance, but uh, I developed this sense of teamwork where um, the team is bigger than the self. It's you, it's bigger than the one individual, and you're all working together to to achieve a goal. And that 
that really sunk in. Um, we had a really great coach, um, I'd say Mr. Kiwanuka, and he always he always reminded you that it's a it's teamwork. You're not you're not playing by the self. You are you are a unit. Um, that being said, I didn't play it for too long. I think I I only did two years of that. It's a rough game, man. It's a rough game. I, it's a rough game. I, I, it's impossible not to get hurt. But um, did you guys have the big rugby parties after the game? I, I always remember having to drink beer out of a... Somebody had to take their shoe off, and we had to drink beer out of somebody's shoe <laughs> after the game. That was, not, that was not pretty. I think they called it shoot the boot. Shoot the boot! I'm like, I don't want to shoot the boot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're in high school, so none of that's going on because you've been kicked out, right? Yeah, we're in high school. Um, like, you, the best thing about that would be, um, you know, food after after the game, or, uh, you know, drinking a lot of soda, or something of the sort, a lot of bread. It was that was the celebration after the match. That was the treat. Uh, that was a treat. All right, so, that was a treat. All right, let's talk about high school then. Are you able to get into any computer classes in high school? Does that exist? Is that is that where some more interest ends up? Talk to me about that. Do you end up with your own computer in high school? How does all that work at this school? So the this school also had a computer lab. Um, no internet, unfortunately, but it had a couple more computers two rows, I think almost 12 computers. Yeah, the, the 12 computers. And wow, that was quite an experience. I would find excuses to just spend time in the computer lab. Um, of course, games. And by this time, I had developed uh, a bit of curiosity about what does it mean to you know how do this how these games developed or how what are these programs how are they written and then that's how I discovered programming and then now I started you know, looking up when when we go break ho go home for the holidays I take some of my pocket money go to a cyber cafe an internet cafe and now Google and then print out stuff or just save it on a floppy disk to go read at home and I was. I, at this point, I discovered now how to write programs, and the first programming language I <laughs> I used was Pascal programming language because I because I this was just my my young self going on on the internet something I'm not used to having, and then trying to find out okay how do you write programs how where looking for guides, and then the first program I wrote was just as I was following instructions and it was how to create um, an encryption program that just switches every 13th letter, 13 letters and then creates a palindrome. It was, it was interesting. It was just... You're doing this in the cyber cafe or you're doing this back at school? They had, they had a Pascal compiler on those computers at school? They didn't have a Pascal, did they? Oh yes, they did have Pascal compilers in school. And then also also doing it at home when I was home for the holidays. We had a we now had a home computer. When does the computer end up at home? Because you haven't been at home, right? You were you went to boarding school by seventh grade. You're now again boarding in high school. At some point, you come home one day and there's a computer there, right? So, so uh, this was when I was in uh, high school, year one, high school form one. And I went home, and what do I find? This white box with a monitor on top, and I was happy. And so, trying to figure out how do you how do you start how do you operate this? Get to find out it's not yet working. Uh, my cousin who's putting it together um, had some issues, so he had to go. He'll come back the next day to fix it. So I'm I'm there waiting, you know. I go all the way to his office, try and find him to bring him, you know, let's get this, let's get this working. And so when it finally works, 
it doesn't have any user interface. You're just on MS DOS. Um, <laughs> what happened? He, I think, the hard drive that it came with broke or something. Just had an issue, and then he had to look for. He had to source another hard drive, and then he couldn't get. It was just a long thing, but. But you were there that day. He's doing it all. You were there that day. I was there. I was so that's like watching. amazing, right? Yeah. That you were there that day. You could not have. You might not have been there, and you didn't get to that experience. But now you're back in. You're back in high school. So you're able to now go back to school, jump in the lab, and also continue program. But they didn't have any classes, like programming classes, in high school. No, we didn't have. We had classes, but it wasn't uh, an examinable course. You couldn't take it. You couldn't follow through, do a final exam with it, but they had like extracurricular classes for that. Um, we had a bit, a, little, a few programming classes, some basic stuff. I can't even, we're writing macros or something. But it's not the focus of your education there. I mean, no. if, you, yeah. if you're able to sneak time in the lab between everything else, you, you did that. But it wasn't your primary focus nor any sort of elective you were taking in the high school. So now I'm curious, right? Like you get, you're, you're, you're close to graduating high school and now you have to think about what the next step is, which I imagine uh, is gonna be university, right? It's 2005, you're, you're, you're gonna be graduating. Your, your next decision is gonna be, do you have any idea what you wanna study the university? Do you have any idea at the time what you kinda wanna do for work as well after university? What, what's going on in your head in 2005? I, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do for work, but I wanted, I knew I wanted to do, I want to program, I want to write programs. I just wanted to, to be around computers and programming looked very interesting to me. Uh, from what I'd written, from what I'd read, um, I, I actually remember reading about Linux from a from a magazine. Like, it was like, oh, this other operating system, Linux, is. Uh, it was a New Scientist magazine, I think. I think it was a New Scientist, and they were talking about um, operating systems. Uh, it was just a like an article about operating systems, and I was like, wow, there's something else other than Windows. All this time I've been using Windows, there's something else, and yeah, just my curiosity was sparked. At that point, I was, I was sure I was going to, to do something around computers. Um, probably be a programmer or um, system analyst. That was something that was in my heavily in my head. So then, what are your choices here for university? Do you apply to a few universities that focus on this? Yes, um, there is. So there are a couple of universities that have that offer. Actually, most of the universities at that time offered computer science. They still do, but now it's there are a lot more courses, a lot more options uh, to go through. So I got into I got into Kenyatta University, which is just near Mamu High School. It's literally on the same road, um, about twenty. Except you don't have housing there. Right, you, know, you need housing, or the university had housing. The university has housing. Um, they have, they have. It's great, but you can't stay. You can't stay there when you're off session. Off session, you have to. You all have to go leave and go home. So I couldn't bring this um, <laughs> desktop computer. Travel with this desktop computer two hours put it in here in Nairobi, and then two hours again back to Nakuru every single time. You were doing that, or you said you couldn't? I couldn't do, no, I couldn't do that. Um, that. That wasn't an option for me. And you needed a computer to, they, did they say to you that if you're gonna enroll in this, you need your own computer? They didn't have a lab or anything? They had a lab, so we could use the lab. Um, it, was, it was nice. Uh, those internet, we had internet connectivity there, and so I joined 2007, 2007, 2008, 
that was my like i my primary mode of you know access to computers was through the lab and that's how i got to interact with things got to learn java um using was it the blue jay editor oh, can't that was a while back blue jay and then just remember writing my first pro java program had a lot of j option pain where it just popping up <laughs> asking you uh, enter your age and then uh, you know, you you now qualify for whatever so an interesting experience do you enjoy those it sounds like you enjoyed those programming classes you enjoyed learning all that stuff in the that was a four year degree right so you graduated high school in 2005 so was that that was like from 2005 through 2009 you're you're at university those are gap year i uh, finished high school 2005 and then those are gap year um uh, started 2007 university and then 2007-2009 i didn't have a personal computer to use and then 2009 my dad got me a a laptop my parents got me a laptop and i was so excited because at this same time they there was a free wi-fi situation happening in 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 campus they had all these hot spots around the hostels and you could now have connectivity from the comfort of your own room and that was a game changer now i could now I didn't have to go to the library to to do research or to go to a I had connectivity at my own comfort. I could just study independently and, and you know that was amazing. Um I'll never forget that I think it was called butterfly Wi Fi or something. Truly amazing. I yeah. It was like so your your parents getting you the laptop and then having open access to Wi Fi going to 2010 was, 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 um, yeah, life-changing, right? you yeah, that's amazing. So when you finally graduate university with a degree in, what was your degree in? Was it a computer science degree, computer information systems? Computer science degree. And yeah, there was, there was a lot of program, a lot of math. Uh, I enjoy math, fortunately I enjoy math. And there was a lot of uh, programming, discrete mathematics. But one of my favorite classes was um, computer graphics, where we got to work with OpenGL, uh, C++ and OpenGL. And this was my first time writing a C++ program or any C-based language. And now I was I was just learning new concepts and you know understanding when when my program crashed what was happening trying to understand like what is this error what does this error message mean and going into it and the final project was um we're supposed to model one of the hostels you choose a hostel and then you model it uh you just model it using OpenGL. that was so much fun i think i spent more time doing that than actual <laughs> that's that's <laughs> awesome so it sounds like you found some passion in on the visualization side of computing right like so as you're graduating university what are you thinking now you got to go find a job right mm -hmm. so are you thinking now i'm going to move to the big city of nairobi, nairobi and find a job like how does that work do you go home first do you Talk to me about that transition out of university, getting a degree, and then getting into a workforce. Because now we're talking 2011, right? You graduate university in 2011? 2011. Um, so fortunately, um, one of my friends was already, two of my friends in the same class already had jobs. Um, they already had, um, they already started working. One was a full-time software uh, engineer, like he was a, he'd done a lot of engineering, so he was full-time software engineer. And the other one was a project manager. And 
um, I had a chat with them. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I want to do this. I'm, I'm really, I really want to work. I want to get the experience. So I went ahead and got a job before I graduated. And that was amazing. After, immediately after my coursework, just before graduating. And wow, that was, I'll never forget that going to that interview, I was, I was almost late for that interview. I had to, you know, run from the bus, take off my shoes and then just floor it, try to get to the, try to get to the office just before time. And I, I remember I was sweating. Um, I was trying not to look nervous. <laughs> like, give me, yeah, I'm ready for this. Uh, interviewed with the, the CEO and he was like, okay, you know what? I'll give you a chance. Uh, you're straight out of uni. This is what I'll pay you. Are you okay with that? Fresh me doesn't know how to negotiate. I'm just fresh from the classroom. I'm like, oh, this is this is money. You're paying me money to work. Okay, fine. I'll take I'll take it. I didn't even negotiate. I realized later that that was a, like, that's the worst thing to do. You don't take you you have to negotiate. No, but look, you needed a job right out of school. So somebody is willing to pay you. Like, I don't think it was a lot of us have done that. I did the same thing out of school. I don't care how much you want to pay me. Just I need the job. I need the experience. I, I can live on this. It's the next job that you got to really start focusing on negotiations. Right. But somebody now allowed you to have some resume experience there. So so what did you do? What did you do at this company and how long were you with them? So I worked. Um, there was a um, platform I was working on. It was an open marketplace for farmers and then just to connect, it's called ukulima.net. Built on PHP, Codeigniter PHP. And yeah, that's what I worked on primarily. And I just remember thinking, wow, this is, you know, I, it was a, also it was a Rockefeller funded project. And I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. I'm working on world class projects. Wow. I was just fresh out of uni. I'm I'm getting into uh I have a I have a desk, I have a you know coffee mug and I'm working on this. Yeah, but where are you living? I'm living in Nairobi now. I moved to Nairobi. Yeah, but you're sharing you're sharing a room with some some people? No, no, in a, I lived in a small, <laughs> in a small, uh, I'd call it a studio apartment. That's the best way to describe it. You had enough money to pay for that? Half my, half my salary was going to my rent. Half, actually half my salary was going to rent. The other half was, I was trying to balance between um, food, <laughs> water, electricity, and hanging out with friends. One of those had to, I had sacrificed one of those. Well, you needed a couple of bucks at least to grab a beer or something, right? Like, yeah, yeah. But you did it. <laughs> so they were paying you enough to have a place to live, food, utility. Um, I'm curious if you were expected to send a little money back to your parents or not, or that wasn't going to be, that wasn't necessary. No, that wasn't necessary. Uh, yeah, my mom told me early on, never, you never have to do that. Um, earn your, you know, earn your money. We took you to through school, not because we expect you to pay us back, but because we want the best for you. So I, I, ne I never had to send money back at that point. And it's, it, you know, once in a while, when I when I had when I'd saved enough, I'd I'd like do something nice for my brother or my folks, but it was never expected. Okay, so how long are you at this first job? I mean, I know that you're, you everybody lives paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes I feel like I'm still living paycheck to paycheck. And I'm <laughs> 52. Okay, so so I don't know if that ever ends, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Not to get you depressed or anything. Uh, <laughs> um, how long are you at this job? I'm at this job for about eight months. Um, cause I joined May 2011 and then left January 2012. 
So I got this other job and the pay was four times what I used to get at this other place. So So how did you find this job? Um a friend connected me. A friend I used to I worked with at the first job. He was like, Yo, uh, you there's an opportunity that's come up. Would you like to speak with, with someone? So same thing happens. I go to this co working space, uh sharply dressed with my laptop in tow and I'm looking for this I'm looking for this guy. Uh so where where do I call? And they had a makeshift bar in the middle of this co working space on Friday. He was sitting there and he was having a beer. So I sit there and I also have a beer and we have a conversation. It's like, Yeah, um I've heard good things about you and I think I want to work with you. How, when uh when can you start working? I'm like, yeah, I have to give my notice at this other place. Um I can do I can do two weeks notice. I can do a month. Like you do a month and then um we can start properly. So this is a, a whole conversation over beer. There's nothing there's nothing signed, there's nothing yeah. So I was like I was uh, that this is a Friday. And then Monday I'm like, did that actually happen or was it you know, a question <laughs> <that> was it? <laughs> but you have to research, make sure this is a legit company, legit job, legit everything, right? Yeah. So I guess you find out it's legit, right? So what do you do next now? It's Monday. Now what do you do? Monday and then um I go just tell my former boss, yo, you know what? Uh, the boss at the first year is telling. I got this offer and um and I'm taking it. And he was like, Yeah, I'm I'm happy for you. Take your chance and grow. I was like, Yeah, this is this is nice. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll never forget that because he was um he told me that you, you should never hold back people. Uh let let people grow. Um and it it always gives back, it always comes back. I I agree with that hundred percent. So suddenly you find yourself now working, you got a lot more money coming in, mm -hmm. right? You don't have, you don't move though, right? You stay where you're at or do you upgrade your lifestyle? I stay where I'm at. Now I can buy a fridge and a microwave and I bought this, all this <laughs> stuff. Um, Cause before I only had a cooker, uh, a few pots, uh, plates, just stuff like that. No, but I was living much better. So you're, 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 you're living large now, bro. You're, 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 you now can cook a little bit at home. You can have some cold drinks. You can keep actually different food now. Yes. Wow. What, what, what's the work at this place? So, so what are you doing there? What, what, are you still doing PHP? Are you still doing? Yes, I'm doing PHP. Um, it was a, it was a blog, it was a financial blog. So what I did was, uh, maintain the main site and then just make sure everything works okay and looking forward like as in planning ahead for things like if if you're expecting to like a spike in traffic what do we do i i was just my own boss and <laughs> this was i was just given feeling so was it a small company did you work was there like five other people there were there 20 other people there 10 other people by the time we grew uh, a year later, it got to 10 people, but it started at five people. It started at four people, actually. So you were both doing development on the website and then maintaining the production environment, I guess. Where were they running production? Just in the closet? Back then, a lot of people were just running computers in closets. Yeah, just, <laughs> no, we had, uh, the website was on AWS. It was on AWS at the time, yeah. All right, so this is like 2012. And yeah. And you had acquired at least a, a machine in, in Amazon, and that's where you were running yeah. the website. Were they using any special CMS type of software since it's a financial blog? I have to imagine there was a lot of change in content. Or Yes. Uh, we only, only, they only used uh, WordPress. WordPress with a few tweaks here and there. So how long are you at this company? I mean, 
your salary's gone up, you're, you're living pretty good, you must be much more relaxed, your parents must be incredibly happy, you're, you're pretty much now self-sufficient. Um, it's 2012, how long, are you, how long are you at this company? Uh, one year. So <laughs> what happened? Wow. Uh, yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> the transition story. So you go back to that to that cafe. <laughs> <laughs> it was one year, um, one year experience at this at this company, and I'd say it was it, it was a different experience. Most of most of the other my my other teammates were writers. Like they, they wrote the financial articles, uh, there was an editor. So this wasn't a very technical team I was working with. It was mostly writers. And now with that sense, I've just also changed the way I think I thought about writing. And I used to hate writing, but I gradually grew into it. I never wrote any articles, but I, I understood how to express myself. So um, there, was, there, was, there was some issue with uh, investors and the company shut down early 2013. Oh, so you wouldn't have left, but uh, the company. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ooh, 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 this is kind of scary. Did you know this was happening? Did you have enough time to find another job or suddenly you have a refrigerator and you can't pay for it? I had another. <laughs> There's a, who's going to pay for this? <laughs> Fortunately, I I had an I found another job um, before. Just when we we're given the time, we were told oh, we're shutting down January next year. This was like December twenty, no November twenty twelve. Ah, so they gave you like a good six plus weeks to, okay, so you're able to, so, so, but now this is the wrong time to be looking for a job, right? Because now you're kind of desperate. So how many job interviews do you go on in those six weeks? Just one, several? Uh, one. There was this, <laughs> uh, I, I just went on the IHUB, there was a co-working space called IHUB, and I went to the jobs board, and I saw this interesting job posting they're looking for a software developer and they, le they left on the really nice description and the link to their website so i clicked on that link and what i saw just made me say yes this is where i want to work though you know those black and white photos where people are they're hugging sort of holding each other like this and they're all laughing i was like yes I want to be in that photo. Yes. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like everybody's happy and having fun at work. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And someone is holding a beer. I'm like, yes, this is a, it's a chill place. I'd really like to work here. Were you, before, before you finish, were you worried that you weren't going to get the same salary? Or did you feel like your salary was still competitive no matter where you went? I felt like, I felt like this would be, it will still be competitive. All right. So you go to the interview. I'm just wondering because the guy paid you like four times that you were making, which could have meant that he was either overpaying you to have you or you were really underpaid in the first job. So maybe you were like super underpaid in the first job. I was super underpaid. From my analysis, I was super underpaid on my first job. But now at least, yeah, now at least things got on the right track. All right. So you go and interview. You go interview at this company, right? Everybody's smiling, holding a beer when you go in the interview, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell, tell me about the interview. Uh, the first one, the first interview was face-to-face. -face, um, the Two of the founders, they had three founders. One was away doing his master's. So I was talking to two guys. It was uh, interesting. The questions weren't that hard. They, they were just trying to see for the cultural fit. I was like, yeah, this is cool. And then they sent me now the technical question and they gave me an indefinite timeline to submit it. I was like, what, what, what is this? So I go Friday night, 
start working on this saturday sunday i you know i ask for i ask other people about their their opinion of this like what do you think what do you think about my solution and i finally submitted it on a tuesday i think yeah a tuesday so this was a big project they gave you to work on yeah like yeah. this wasn't this this took you like three full days i'm assuming you did it in php or something either php or java no it was java this this i did it in java yeah and yeah so they they called me back and they're like yeah you you have the job i'm like yes i was so excited i called i remember i called my mom i called my dad called my brother I was like yeah, yeah this i i hadn't even asked about my <laughs> the salary i was going to be paid like if they pay me in beer at least something to keep the refrigerator running <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway they came to salary negotiation it was i'd say there was a about a 40 yeah, 40%, 40% increase from what I was getting before. And I was like, should, should I negotiate for more? But I was like, you know what? Let's get it. Let's let's just start working. I was so excited. No, because you didn't have a job in like, yeah. in like four weeks from now. So you weren't in a brilliant position, but you still made more money. So I, I, I think that's fair. Yeah. So wait, so let me get back to timelines then. So then... This is in this was in 2012, right? You take this next job. So how long are you at this job? Three years. Oh wow, you got three years out of it. So now it's like 2015. So what was what did you what did you enjoy about this job? And then why did you leave in three years? Or, or did you even enjoy the job at all? You just I mean three years, okay. I mean that's good time. Um, I enjoyed the people at this job. Um, I'll be honest the advertising was not a lie then it wasn't a lie there's a lot of there's a, a lot of jokes a lot of you know you you work hard you play hard uh you i enjoyed myself and i learned a lot um the founders the founders were one was canadian one was american and one was slovenian and now there was like oh this whole you know understanding different cultures and how different people work. It was like an amazing experience, I'd say. Actually, I have a question for you because you had worked for a lot of local businessmen up to that point, and now you're working for some international businessmen. There's, there's these big differences between the way they both, right? right? Everybody kind of operates there. But you really enjoyed working at this company. It sounds like they were a lot more relaxed what was the business problem they were trying to solve at this company? Uh, it was a geospatial company, first hand. So um, the, they were trying to make uh, maps more accessible, using maps to solve problems. So I'd give an example. Um, there's a sewer lining, I mean, the sewer lines in Nairobi and specific parts of Nairobi. Now, trying to understand how this sewer lines are placed and where like where can you add more housing or where do we need to improve on that on like the sewer lines so this was in collaboration with the nairobi city council and there was another company a design company and it was it was just an interesting project it was a <laughs> so they were trying to help the government make I guess financial decisions on, on and you know housing the, the the growth of the city and stuff. That yeah, were they actually putting money into any of the development? It's one thing to say I think we should build homes here, but were they even helping in the construction of? No, we did not do any construction of homes, but there was um, like a really big initiative to get uh, like, to have a better understanding for that for so like. That was a uh, around Kibera, the sewer line project. There was another uh, waste disposal project in Matare, and that was Matare is another um, housing area within Nairobi. 
and now trying to understand how to make that better. So this is amazing for you, right? Because you're starting to learn economic development in your in your city. Like this is a whole nother level of education that you probably never even thought about. Does does that still stick with you today? Do you drive around and look at things and start thinking about now more around economic development based on this company that you worked at? Yes. Uh, it properly changed the way I think about governance, the way I think about um, like economic development and how we, I myself as a citizen should take up charge on things that I don't see are right. Like let's say there's a, <laughs> there's a line that's been open for three months. Something should be done about that. We're paying taxes. But yeah, that really changed the way I think about um, governance and economics at large. So are you primarily coding in Java here? Are you working with certain tools? Like what's your day to day there? Python. So you switched to Python. So your, your programming test is in Java and then you end up working in Python? The, the CTO told me to choose um, whichever language I want to. I choose, I, choose, I chose Java and then now worked with Python. Came to really enjoy Python. All right, so what gets you out of this company? What what happens three years later? Because I think this is an amazing opportunity for you. I feel like the, the experience you're getting, not just technically, but but um, business oriented, socially, economic, like there's a lot you're learning about even your own city and your own country, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. what happens in three years when it's like now 2015? Who uh, downsizing. They had to downsize and unfortunately had to let me go. Did they give you any warning? Did they give you severance or you just came to work one day and you were like... No, 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 they gave me warning, uh, advanced warning. And they just told me, um, they gave me two weeks, uh, no, two months um, to start looking for something else. Then they gave me, a, you know, a comfortable severance package um, and there's money I'd saved up so at this point, after this job, I was not in a mad dash to go find another role I could take. So did they, did they say thank you and gave you two months severance and now you were free? Or did they give you two months of, they, were, they told you two months while you were working and then they gave you severance? I'm trying to get a sense, were you still going to work? Yeah, I was still going to work. Um, and then they gave me severance after that. So you didn't find a job in those two months. So in those two months severance. of warning, you didn't find a job. No, I didn't find a job. I went, I went for one interview. Uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe I wasn't a cultural fit, culture fit, or maybe because the, they didn't give me any feedback after the interview. So I, I just went away with questions like, did I answer something wrong? Was there? That was the first time you didn't get a job on the spot after an interview. Yeah. Wow. And you were really questioning everything. I was questioning See, everything. See, that's why, this is why at Arden, I really have put my foot down pretty hard with the team to always tell people in the nicest way possible, you know, and it can be uncomfortable, but why are we not hiring them? What is it that they didn't do right? If it wasn't technical, like, you have to tell people in a constructive way, or how can they improve them? If they disagree with you, they disagree with you. But, but this is why we're not hiring. Like now, you're, you, it's the first time you didn't get a job. You're questioning everything you did. Now you're questioning your own skill set. Now you're questioning, oh my God, is this going to happen again? Right now you're, this is horrible, right? It's horrible. I don't even, I didn't even apply for another job for a while. And yeah, I think I was just, I was in limbo. It had to take a few, it had to take two months, two, the first two months of um, 2016 to just find myself. Yeah, but now, now you're gone. Now, now, you're, now the job is gone. They gave you, what, a couple of weeks severance. Yeah. Then now you're back to where you were. You need a job. Like, so, so what do you do now? Do you find a job in two weeks? I found a job uh, February 
uh, was it no 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 march 2016 um this was at radio africa um <laughs> radio africa is a like a big umbrella company that has uh all these radio stations and there's also a, a newspaper section of it called the star and what was happening at the time is they wanted to move digital they they had a want to have more digital products in as much as they still they still have radio and print they wanted now to move into the digital space and i joined to help build this music app called songa music and that was just one ride <laughs> one amazing ride <laughs> how long were you there how long were you there i was there i was there for one year this one, this one, you can call it that. <laughs> was it total? I'm getting a sense from you that that place was total chaos, that the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. Yes, there was so much chaos. Um, we were always almost about to release. There was always, uh, always stuck in limbo. What is, what is remaining? Should we do this before we release? So there was always, I was always uh, in a state of anxiety towards the end of the week. I just remember I was always um wondering is this is this when we release? Is this should should I plan for this? Well so you had a lot of anxiety and stress every week because there was so much unknown and chaos. A couple of things. What what were you were you programming in Python there, Java? Was it mobile development at this point? Ruby. I was programming in Ruby there. Oh my God! Every time you get a job, dude, you get you you jump into a new program. You're like That's this amazing. amazing polyglot at this point. <laughs> okay, so 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 you can't take it anymore. You're done. It's time to find another job. So how do you find the next gig? At least you have a job this time. Yes, at least I have a job. So I had two options. Wait, you, wait, 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 wait! You didn't go backwards in salary when you took this job at uh, Radio Africa, right? No, no, no. Uh, went up. So um, I got an offer from Andela when I was still at Radio Africa. Did you apply there? How, how did that happen? Someone I knew, someone I knew at Andela recommended me and then I said, okay, fine. Let me, let me apply. Let me see this. And we, I went for interviews. I sat through a few, you know, uh, sessions and it was great. They, sent me an offer and I took this back to Radio Africa and Radio Africa was like, okay, um, we are offered, we are ready to counter offer that. I was like, why? Just give us your counter offer. I was like, okay, I'll just write uh, an absurd figure so that you say no, and then I'll just go. And they accepted. I was like, wow, I should have written a bigger number. <laughs> but yeah, they accepted and I was like, okay, let's, let me just, and this, this offer came in, um, so they joined 2016, this offer came in later 2016, around September 2016. So I took this trade, said it, okay, you know what, I'm going to make this thing work, let's go. So you stayed? I stayed. And you said no to Andela. So this is in that first year. Mm -hmm. So in that first year, you couldn't even take it. Like your end number of months in, I can't take it. You went, you went to Andela. They offered you some money. You came back. They offered you more money. You did another six months. Mm -hmm. And you still can't take it. So do you go back to Andela and say, uh, uh, how does that work? It, so what <laughs> um, I was just, I was talking to a friend about my frustrations and he was he told me you know you know what i feel like this other company might be a good fit for you he actually sent introduction emails to two companies uh this was brick and jumo jumo.world and i was like okay yeah these are good options i go to interviews i go <laughs> parallel interviews uh brick I went, Brick was the first one, and I was given a tour of the place, everything, by the CTO, and then, you know, just given a, a run through of, of 
culture of the place. Then I had a technical interview with one of the technical leads um, a few days later. This other place, Jumo, we went, I went in for a heavy technical interview. That was my first, no, that was my second whiteboard interview. But now there are two engineers and they were standing next to me as I write my solutions on the whiteboard. It was pretty intense. And I remember walking out of that interview thinking, wow, that was a train wreck. Um, let me just go think about something else. And so I'm just back at Radio Africa, just thinking about uh, what, what happened. And um, Brick calls me and says, you know, I, we're good. Do you want, do you want this job? We, we really would like to have you. Like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. I, I said, okay, yeah. Let, give me a moment to think about it. But yes, that that does sound amazing. Then Jumo sends me an email and like, yes, uh, congratulations, Ishwa. We'd like to have you as part of our team. So now I have two job offers. <laughs> it's not, it's not, these are good problems to have, right? So They're good problems. So look, we got like 15 minutes left here. And I, I obviously we need to hear your answer on this, but I'm just, so, so we can move, move, there's other things I want to cover. But anyway, so you got two offers. The, the, I'm assuming the money is pretty much the same in both of them. I'm going to guess that you were so wiped out at Juno and it was so intense. And right now what you need is to chill that you chose uh, Brick, right? So what did you choose? I, I chose Brick. And then <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to go there. You you needed, you you didn't need intense right now. You needed, you needed to chill out a little bit. What was the uh, so? How long were you at Brick? <laughs> One year again. <laughs> Dude, it's all good because you know what? You're doing exactly what you need to do to get raises because you're not getting <laughs> these kinds of raises. Or, or there. So what was what was the programming stack there? What were you using at Brick? Was it more Ruby? More Ruby. Um, there was some, uh, what else did we write? Uh, a bit of Python, but mostly Ruby. So too chill at Brick, can't, you're too chill. So what happens 12 months later now? You're just like, does something fall in your lap or you're, or you're looking again? So, yeah. Um... I'll tell you this though, like your resume so far is like warning signs for me <laughs> because if i were to look at it and i see year 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 three years year that my brain would have went and we're gonna get this guy for 12 months right like <laughs> some people think that that's irrelevant you know i've talked to people who think that's irrelevant you should always be improving but you would have to explain this to me but so far i like the story like you're explaining it fine if i can make life interesting and chill enough for you, you'll stay for three years, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so what happens? How do you find this next? Does this next thing just fall on your lap? You had to take it? What? Uh, yeah, this next thing fell on my lap and um, it, it was to someone I'd actually met at uh, Special Collective. This is my third job, the place I stayed at for three years. Uh, he was interning there. He was an, he came in as an intern. Um, I think, yeah, he came in as an intern and then now he wanted to start his own company back in Kenya. He'd come in, um, I think he was Georgetown. He was in Georgetown University or something. So, and then now he came into Kenya to start, um, his own company and he was like, yeah, you join us. Um, uh, to revolutionize how you know med the medical structure of Kenya, like how medicine gets to people and costing and everything. I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. Um, let's let's see where this journey goes. So he pays you a little bit more money. You jump. It's like 2018. Now you're working in another sector of medicine again, social kind of. The, 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 this, just the business experience you're getting every year is really interesting. So, so what happens? So you're there for a year, right? It's 2019. 
stay for a year. I think I stayed there eight months. What happened that, that you only stayed eight months? Wrong environment? They, they lost funding? No, no, no. They still had funding. I just felt like um, I wasn't a fit. Like we, I, I, it wasn't my fit. Uh, and I wasn't in my description of happy. That wasn't it. I was working long hours, longer hours, trying to get something working. And you know, there's always a pivot. There's always something changing. And that's fine. It's just that you know, it at some point it hits a you hit a, a wall, a dead end. I'm getting a sense from you that when there's too much chaos or too much change, you get a little bit of anxiety and it's not where you want to be. Yeah. Like you'd prefer to have a product that has a good solid roadmap. You know what you're going to be working on a month from now in a sense, right? Obviously there's bugs and you, but, but I, I get a sense that you're somebody who likes a little bit more structure, a little bit more roadmap, a little bit more of that. And a lot of these startups are never going to be that way, right? Like. The bigger company you were in, you stayed for three years. There was a lot more structure. This yep. is another one of these. I don't know if you've recognized this for yourself, but I'm recognizing this for you. So it's now eight months in. You're like, nope, too much chaos for me. Uh, not good for my mental health. So you start looking again. Or did something else just fall in your lap? I was just starting to, you know, just looking and I asked, one of my old friends, actually the CTO from the place I stayed at for three years, Social Collective, and I asked him to be a reference in my resume. He said, oh, you're, you're looking for an opportunity. Huh, okay, can we have a call? And then we had a call and told him, and he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. I think we, 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 need, we need your technical assistance here for the back end. I was like, okay, um, that sounds interesting. And then we went through a series of uh, interviews, and the, the interviews it wasn't there wasn't any technical interviews. Um, it was mostly like cultural interview, cultural fit interviews. And I just remember thinking, well, this is this is interesting. This is this is different. Um, the the questions or you know. And then the also the parks, so they're just letting letting me know about the park along the way, and I was amazed. So yeah, of course I took the job. <laughs> they offered me a, uh, and the salary salary was, again like this one. This one was the biggest bump I'd ever I'd gotten since I started working. Like this was a a huge. Yeah. Amazing. I mean. Dude, we're talking in less than about in about six or seven years. You more than doubled your salary, right? I mean, we're not asking numbers, but if I just did the math in my head, you almost tripled your salary in seven years by jumping between jobs for the right reasons, right? Because you're looking for the right tech, you're looking for the right culture, you're looking for the right, uh, like, you know, everything. And yet you're, you're able to kind of jump your salary up. So this is about 2009 or 19, I'm guessing, 2019. How long do you stay with this company? I uh, stay with them for two years. Wow. So that's like a home run right there. You did yeah. two years. Two years. Man, I mean, that must have been beautiful. And then Microsoft comes knocking on the door. Like, we got like eight, about eight minutes left. So, so you're there two years. I imagine you're happy. What, what, what were you programming in at that point? Is it Go? Is it... Java, is it like C sharp? What are you what are you programming for two years? Um Ruby, a bit of Go and a bit of Java Kotlin. But I didn't I didn't handle the app a lot. I was just helping with issues. But yeah, mostly Ruby. What was the business problem they were trying to solve? What was real quick, what was the business problem this company was trying to solve? It's pretty interesting. It started out as a a USSD automation library. So there's this uh, user something from structured data. It's a protocol that's used on mobile phones, um, all types of mobile phones. 
Oh, the phone, the phone protocol, okay. which gives yeah. you menuing systems. And yeah, it starts with the letter. I did a little programming in that space. So, okay, so it was the mobile phone apps before you had smartphones. Mm. You had to pound, yeah. blah, 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 and you'd get a menu. So you were coding that kind of stuff? This was, uh, those, uh, an Android, there's an Android library that automates that in the background. So you can use, because USSD is pretty big in, in emerging markets. Uh, it's pretty big here in Kenya. So um, if app developers wanted to like, integrate payments on their system and they didn't have to, they didn't want to go the whole process of integrating with a third party or anything, they could actually implement it on their app independently. Just use the SDK, um, automate USSD in the background, and then carry out payments or just carry out any other USSD transaction. Yeah, so this is uh, this is USSD, which every phone had it, and so you didn't. You had an entire market of people who had who didn't have smartphones, and this allowed you to build basically text-based apps on the phone for everything, for payments, for uh, whatever it is you wanted to do there. No, no, no. I, okay, so U USSD, int really interesting. So what happens two years in at this point? Um, how does Microsoft end up in your life? Um, again, a friend, uh, a friend reaches out. He's like, uh, uh, we are hiring. He's actually a recruiter at uh, Microsoft. He's like, yeah, um, you should just come, just apply, um, go through the interview. You don't have to take the job. Just go through the interview, see how it goes. And I remember going through the interviews and, and I'm feeling someone pretty confident. Others, I'm like, did I do that right? Am I, why am I still doubting myself? But anyway, whatever happens, happens. And then they send me an offer. And yeah, it was, it, it, was, a, it was a good offer. It, was it even more money? Was it just a little bit more money? Was it, did you? It was actually a bit, just a bit lower. But then I just, I said, okay, you know, um, I might not take this role uh, because, you know, and then they're like, okay, yeah, we, we can, we can restructure this, can find a way to restructure this. And yeah, they, they made a counter offer, which was, okay, they made a second offer, which was. At least comparable to where you were. Plus you had bigger benefits at this point. How long had Microsoft been in town by the time you you interviewed here? Had they been in town already for a few years or were they just just getting in? They've been in town for a while, uh, but they decided to expand um, back in 2019, October 2019, uh, thereabouts. That's when they decided to, to expand. And now you've been there for like three years. I've been here since uh, July. July 2021, last year. Oh, you just got in. Okay, we just finished the two years. Okay, so you've been there since July. So you're like six months. How's it going so far? Are you looking for the next job yet or, or we're good? <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know where you go. So I'm kind of curious. What's, Okay, what company can pull you out of Microsoft at this point? Is there, in all honesty, and I know your employer is going to be listening, and it's good for them to hear this. <laughs> so, so like, like, uh, is there anything that you think that could pull you out of Microsoft? Because I always feel like if I got hired at Google, it, I mean, what could pull me? And a lot of people leave Google after like a decade or so. So I guess it's, it's similar to, like, since everything is so internal and proprietary, you kind of lose... Our last guest was talking about how they left Google after 10 years because they weren't learning anything that was happening outside of Google. So I could see that, right? Like, and I imagine that you're doing a lot of Microsoft stuff. So you start losing track on what's happening outside of the big company. So maybe that gets you out of there in a decade or so, but are there, is there anything that you think could get you out of Microsoft right now at this point? Are, are there, I mean, Amazon's there, mm -hmm. right? Google's yeah. there. Uh, Mm. I'm afraid in six months you're going to sit somewhere and somebody from Google is going to say, what are you doing over there, Microsoft? Come over here. <laughs> I where, wherever it takes me, I will, like, I am, 
always op- open to opportunity. I'd like to like this this role at Microsoft is unlike you know all of the roles that I've had. This one is more the, it's corporate, the structure and everything. And but then the one thing that I really enjoy is the uh, is the uh, you know knowing what I'm going to be working on three weeks from now. Knowing that future planning that is here. It's it, there's pretty well organized. It's extremely well organized. I, I think you need to stay at these larger companies. I really do. <laughs> I, you're not, I'm just getting the sense that you're not a startup. You're not a st- And that's okay. I mean, that's fair. There's nothing wrong with it. You are going to excel at Microsoft because you're, uh, you're going to excel at Microsoft. Th- these are the companies that you need to be at. I'm, I'm somebody who can't have that level of structure. I, I'm, I get, I get, I don't want to use the word bored, but you know, a little bit of chaos sometimes is kind of fun to like <laughs> deal with or try to at least wrangle it a little bit, right? So a lot of the stuff I do, I call it chaos engineering. Like you're taking chaos situations and you're trying to, you're trying to bring them. Once you get them down to there, you're, you're bored. Let's move on to the next chaos. But you, my friend, really, I think, I think Microsoft's going to be this amazing. I, I'm going to expect to see real growth out of you at Microsoft. I think you could grow grow really well there. So I, I'm excited that you're there. Thank you. Thank you. I, I am excited as well. Extremely. We are unfortunately out of time. I wish we had more. I always say that. I always say, I wish I had more time, but we're out. And your, your story is really, really amazing. And I think for people who don't like I got to visit Nairobi, right? I got to visit Kenya and I got to see the culture there and I got to see the people. I fell in love with everybody over there. I really do. But there's a lot of people, at least in the States, that are pretty much landlocked here. So they don't get to experience or hear these stories. And uh, I'm really glad you, you shared yours with everyone. If anybody wants to reach out to uh, talk to you more or ask you questions, what is the, what's the best way for somebody to reach you? Um, email. Twitter, uh, email, Twitter, LinkedIn. What's your Twitter account? And we'll make sure that's in the show notes. What's your Twitter account? At issuer underscore. All right, we'll get that in the show notes uh, so everybody can uh, can uh, reach out to you. Thank you so much for taking uh, all this time to talk with us. I'm, I'm really excited for this episode to, to get published. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. So this is Bill Kennedy with the On Labs podcast. Thank you for sharing time with us and hope to see everybody again real soon.